A very good evening and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukule Tukele. Amendments to South Africa's National Credit Act have some, or rather, have come into effect. But what exactly do they mean for consumers? To give us more details, Simone Monti, head of the Consumer Credit and Privacy Law Sectors at Hogan Levels, and Benai Sager, COO of Deadbusters, uh, joins us now for more from our Cape Town studios. Lady and Jen, thank you so much for your time today. Simone, maybe if we start off with you. Uh, these okay. amendments to the uh, National Credit Act. I understand that there are quite a few uh, and many on a technical level, but more from the consumer's perspective, what do they relate to? Well, I think that the most um, prevalent ones for the consumer would be the affordability assessment guidelines. Um, and previously, a credit provider was required to be reasonable in making an assessment on affordability in order to avoid reckless credit on the side of the credit provider and in order to prevent over indebtedness on the side of the consumer. Mm -hmm. Now what the new regulations have done is they've included a particular formula and new definitions and a way of actually calculating um, affordability which credit providers now have to adhere to. In addition to that there's certain documentation that a credit provider is now obliged to get to verify information that comes from a consumer. So when you're filling in your application form, very often um, what one would find is the applicant is not always honest about how much money they're earning, how much money um, they are having to pay out every month, and what they still owe on their, in their debts. Mm -hmm. um, and so certain formula have been put into this affordability assessment in order to try and um, minimize any variance between what is said and what in fact is the situation. So um, there is a requirement in the Act for a consumer always to be honest um, about what they are saying when they make an application for credit. So as a consumer you need to be aware that um, it actually is um, an obligation of yours to fill in an application form truthfully and honestly. And in fact, that is the only obligation that's set out in the affordability guidelines, which applies to a consumer. Mm -hmm. The balance of them really applies to the credit provider. So the application for credit and the um, business processes and procedures behind making the affordability assessment will really change. So it's a very practical change to the legislation um, on the one hand because one needs to get bank statements, authenticated documentation um, in order to validate what the applicant is saying. And on the other hand it's a very um, business driven change for the credit provider mm -hmm. because they have to go to their back end and see that um, for example there's a, a concept of um, uh, expense norms which takes into consideration where there might be a minimum expense that you can expect from somebody who's earning a certain p uh, gross um, salary so almost or as gross you're income. So the, the perfect average and applying it to that particular applicant. Yes. You, you, that's exactly what you're doing and it will go on the lower edge so that what comes out of this whole formula is um, what they've called discretionary income mm. and the credit provider can decide on what installment an applicant can afford by looking at discretionary income. Fantastic. Yeah. Simone, I want to get Benai's perspective on this, uh, especially given the fact that you obviously deal with quite a few uh, indebted clients and consumers in the South African landscape, Benai. But from your perspective, clearly the overall uh, aim of this new change in the affordability assessments is to the benefit of the consumer to ensure that those who are already indebted don't find themselves further drowning in money that they cannot pay off. I have to agree with my colleague. I think the changes that are being proposed with the amendments are overwhelmingly to the, it, it's for the protection of the consumer. So we believe it's a step in the right direction. Um, with that said, we do know that South Africa has a debt problem. Um, we see this with debt busters clients all the time. Um, you question of whether this is going to help the already over indebted consumer. We would like to think that it should uh, in terms of prevailing their ability or pre preventing their ability to borrow even more. If, if the stricter affordability tests, as Simone outlined, are actually enforced by all credit providers, 
it should help ease the burden on the South African consumer. However, what this means is also, you know, the impact on credit, uh, credit providers, there will be fewer loans granted. Mm. In terms of retailers, there will be less money spent on credit. So, you know, it will have an impact. And already, I think we're seeing quite a massive level of debt f when it comes to consumers. And it's not so much the actual amount that consumers pay, but the, the burden on, on monthly burden on consumers. When someone comes to us, for example, they have to on average spend 108% of their net income to serve the debt they already have. This is above and beyond all the expenses they have to spend in terms of putting food on the table and everything. So we hope that it will help. Uh, to what extent it will, I think it remains to be seen. But now I'd like to stay with you and uh, obviously come back to the affordability perspective of this with consumers. It doesn't necessarily mean that South Africans will save more just because that they can't get access to uh, unsecured lending uh, now that these regulations have gotten tighter. For the consumer then who might be listening at home and watching this evening, uh, the precautions that they need to take in order to ensure that they can pay up their current expenses, how to be more cautious when trying to take out more credit, but more importantly and also uh, with regard to uh, increasing their savings pot. Uh, what words do you have for them? Um, Google, what we always tell people who come to us is, firstly, get your free credit score and know what your credit score is. Know where you stand. Get up-to-date statements on where you stand in the eyes of the credit providers and credit bureau. The second thing we advise everyone to do is actually sit down with your family tonight, look at your monthly statement, make a realistic assessment of how much you are paying for your debt, how much you are paying for your expenses, what you can really afford and what you cannot afford. The, we tell our debt busters clients the difference between good and bad debt. Bad debt. Good debt is something if you know if you can afford to buy a mortgage, uh, get a mortgage, buy a car, pay it off. Bad debt is things that don't last with you very long. Generally, unsecured credit. Now, to the extent that you can sit down with your family tonight make the practical assessment and get your free credit score, know where you stand and be realistic about what you can really afford and try to cut back on those unnecessary expenses. That's what I would advise consumers uh, to do when they go home tonight. Mm. Simone, maybe you can also give us perspective from uh, the consumer's perspective. You mentioned the word honesty, uh, and that is the mm -hmm. obligation that uh, lies on the consumer to be mm -hmm. honest and upfront about uh, how much they really do earn, how much they can afford, and, be, and, and to be open about the expenses as well. If consumers fail to do so now that these NCR changes have come into effect, uh, could they be held liable and accountable for actually being partly to blame for being over indebted? They definitely can be held accountable, otherwise it wouldn't have been put in as an obligation to the Act. So what that obligation will do if it's contravened, it will dilute their rights in terms of alleging that um, the credit provider simply provided credit recklessly mm. without taking into consideration all of the um, expenditure and income and all of the other um, um, components of the financial situation of that uh, applicant. So yes, you dilute your rights. And I think it goes together with what's been said already. If you're honest with yourself about what you can afford, um, then perhaps you will um, complete that application form in a much more honest way. Mm. Um, because credit providers are highly regulated and it has a good effect and a bad effect because credit is, from an economic point of view, extremely important for the flow of funds in the economy. You know, people need credit for different things. It's always going to be needed. True. Um, wh whether you get it legitimately or not will very much depend on how much the regulations clamp down on um, uh, unsecured credit being granted. Because if you need to pay for your child's education, for example, you're going to find that money. So um, it is a question of weighing up what's more important, the pair of shoes or the school fees mm. uh, from a consumer point of view. But from a credit provider point of view um, and from a commercial economic point of view, one would never want to completely stop the flow of funds in the marketplace because credit is always going to be there. We're just hoping it doesn't go underground and it, it, it remains at the regulated level um, with all of the new tightening up of the laws because it is going to be more difficult to get credit. Mm. And maybe then it is important to decide, 
which credit do you want? Do you want your retail credit or do you want your educational credit? Which one's more important? Exactly. And your credit score is extremely important and it's for free. The one thing on the credit score that has changed, which, is, which, is, um, which will have an effect, is that a credit provider has to have a look at your credit report within seven days of granting the loan. That is different to how it was before. Mm -hmm. So every seven days, the information at credit bureaus will be refreshed because any paid up judgments or adverse information that's no longer adverse will be taken has into to be reported now by all credit, bureau, uh, all credit providers to all credit bureaus. Exactly. And the credit provider cannot make a decision on whether or not to grant you credit after seven days. You know, seven days, the credit, within seven days of looking at your credit report, they must grant credit exactly. or not. Simone, we've said quite a bit and I wish we could continue <laughs> with the show for a lot longer, but we have come to that uh, time of the show where we need to recap on some of the takeaways for this discussion for consumers like you and I at home. Your three key takeaway points for consumers to take into consideration with regard to the uh, amendments with regard to affordability. So Google, what I would say is the first thing is be realistic and sit down and make a budget. Um, and if you cannot afford, then find a reputable debt counselor like, like debt busters or somewhere else, go speak to them. Secondly, understand your rights with regards to prescribed debt. Um, there have been some changes in terms of you know, what you can and what you don't have to pay. And the third thing is, um, you know, get your credit report. It's free. You have to know what's in there. And it's, it's a life-changing experience. Exactly. So quite obviously, budget, understand your rights and get that credit report, which you did refer to uh, a moment ago, Simone. Yes. Uh, from your perspective, though, what you'd like consumers to maybe understand from a more legal perspective as to what the responsibilities are? Um, well, I think that legally with the changes, first of all, getting credit is going to be more difficult. Mm. Okay, that's, that's one consideration. Your credit report does become important and it's going to change regularly. And the third thing is you do have obligations as a consumer, even though the credit provider is highly regulated and has got, it seems like a plethora of things to do. Mm -hmm. You as a consumer must remember that other than being honest, which we've discussed, when you take credit, the legal obligation is on you to pay back. It is not an obligation on the credit provider to collect. So when you borrow money, you then create an obligation which you have to fulfill. And it's a legal obligation which if you breach mm -hmm. can have a tremendous effect going forward for a very long time on your credit score and your lifestyle. So we have rights and responsibilities mm. that we need to adhere to. Correct. Thank you so much for okay, your time this thanks. evening. Unfortunately, that's where we have to leave it for personal finance. A big thank you once more to Simone Monty, head of the consumer credit and privacy law sectors at Hogan Lovells, and Benai Sega, COO of Debt Busters, joining us from our Cape Town studios. If you'd like to get in touch with us, please do so, because we love hearing from you. You can tweet any of your comments or suggestions to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag finance410 or to myself at Gukum. Fupi on Twitter. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.